A5.1, information security policies. So it's the first of the uh, clauses, the Annex A clauses. What does it actually say? Well, it states very clearly that in an information security policy and topic specific policies shall be defined, approved by management, published, communicated, and acknowledged by relevant personnel and relevant interested parties and reviewed at planned intervals and if significant changes occur. So there's a lot in there. Now, many organizations, many people think you've got to have a whole plethora of policies um, and that they need to be long and boring and uh, you know lengthy documents. That's not true. Um, the shorter, the better. Um, remembering what it says here, that these policies have to be defined, so they have to be written down. Um, it also says that they need to be approved and published and communicated and acknowledged. Now, the and acknowledged bit is the new part of ISO 27001, 2022. But if you think about what the policy is trying to do, it sets the stage, it sets the scene for what you're trying to achieve with your information security uh, program. So there's a key word that isn't really uh, mentioned throughout the standard, um, or it's mentioned in a couple of places, but I think it's missing in this. That key word is effective. Are your policies effective? Now, if they are long and boring and tedious documents, then are they really going to be effective? Um, people may acknowledge them. May people may you may have communicated them. You may have published them somewhere, but will they be effective? So, my first uh, first piece of advice for you is please keep them short. Remember, a policy is a statement of fact. So, what you need to think about with this particular control is. Do you have a uh, a overarching information security policy which talks about what your objectives are? Um, it's uh, signed. I generally su suggest that you get someone to physically sign on the, on the document itself. Um, if not physical, then an electronic signature would suffice. And then you have topic specific policies. And we'll go into some of the topic specific policies later on. but. It includes things such as backup policy and um, a policy around uh, the use of cryptography, for instance. So these are topic specific. Um, the document itself, um, they need to be approved by management. So you need some approval process. So that can be as simple as going to the head of the organization if you're a small business and asking them to review and then, uh, and then sign them off and accepting them. Or it could be that you have your management review team. They're the ones that are going to uh, review your policies and put them in place. They need to be published. So this means that they should be available for uh, your, your teams, uh, remembering interested, uh, relevant interested parties and relevant personnel need to have access to these. Could be in your employee handbook could be published on your intranet, could be just in a shared folder, depends upon the size of your organization, could be on your company website. Who needs to see them? Keyword in this whole of the uh, this, this particular uh, control is relevant. So relevant personnel and relevant interested parties. Um, they need to be communicated. So again, it's all well and good putting them on your intranet or onto the website um, or in embedded them in within a, a contract, for instance, but you need to communicate and tell people where to find them. That's really important because again, what's the point in writing these things if all you're going to do is just bury them in your, your folder structure or on your internet or on the website? And then finally, and this, this is the new control um, around uh, that policies need to be acknowledged. So this means that when people receive the policies, you need a mechanism, a method to be able to get them to uh, acknowledge that they've read them. Read and understood are two very different things. Um, I, you know, I, I read Harry Potter. I didn't really understand it. Um, but there are other, you know, uh, examples. You know, people read GDPR and don't seem to understand it. Some people read ISO 27001 and don't understand it. So... Read and understood are two different things. What we're looking for here is acknowledged. 
So you need some method that they uh, recognize or that they confirm to you uh, that they have read the policies that they've um, uh, received them. Again, this can be as very simple as um, uh, an email that is sent back to you that says, yes, I've read the policies. It could be that you get them to sign a form to say that they have read the policies. Could be that you use some form of formal HR system. And that will actually, uh, when you communicate the policies, it will ask them to, at the end, to verify that they've read the policy. Again, always remembering that read and understood two very different things. And the uh, who's, who's going to read these? Well, of course, it states very clearly that they should be shared with and communicated to uh, the relevant personnel and relevant interested parties. So interested uh, personnel, relevant personnel, those people within scope, they are people who are in particularly relevant to this. Um, so it could be your employees, it can be contractors, um, it can be consultants like us. Um, we would need to, to know what your policies are around information sharing, for instance. So you would communicate those to us. And we would acknowledge that by perhaps signing up to a, a an addendum to our contract, for instance. Relevant interested parties can be anyone. So it could be um, uh, your suppliers. Uh, so again, it can be um, the people that you interact with. So who are your interested parties? And if you've been watching any of the other videos, you will know how to go about uh, finding out who your interested parties are. And this should be reviewed at a planned intervals and if significant changes occur. So on your audit plan, which again, if you've been watching other videos, you'll know you need to have in place, um, include um, uh, within it a uh, audit of your policies. When are you going to audit your topic specific policies? Maybe there are policies in there that you audit a little more often and a little more regular than, than perhaps the overarching information security policy, which might not change very often. But this is the final part of this uh, requirement, which states very simply that um, policies will be reviewed if there are any uh, significant changes. So that could be that you've um, acquired another organization or you've been acquired um, that there's some significant changes in your infrastructure um, uh, that necessitate a change to the policies themselves. Final word about this, policies, uh, again, uh, it's really important just to remember they shouldn't be long-winded, they shouldn't be tedious. Um, they should be written in a way that can be shared externally. So don't, um, don't put too much um, uh, confidential data and information in there or, or specific information. If you're going to talk about uh, malware protection, for instance, and your policy around vulnerabilities uh, assessments, don't talk about what technologies you're using. Don't talk about what form of malware protection you use. Keep the information relatively um, at high level. Uh, and there you are. That is uh, A5.1, uh, Information Security Policies. See you on the next video. Until then, stay safe, stay well, and stay connected. Bye.